You gonna be big. Yep. Straight up. You gonna be big. Go to TV. You gonna be big. Yep. Straight up. And that's how 1996, uh, we started the record label. In February of uh, 90, 1997, we came out with the first album, 17 Reasons. Um, so uh, this year, actually, like, what were we at? February, what, like 25th, somewhere around 28th? Where we at? Well, no, we in March. Shit, okay. Well, right now, it's like damn near this, 20 years. Yeah. Man. It's like right there. So look, so, so look, so, so the first, one of the first projects you put out was 17 Reasons. Right. And how, how, let's, go, let's go to 17 Reasons back then. Uh, how'd it do when you put it out? Uh, Seventeen, I mean, it did great. The shit flew off the shelf. I couldn't have, I couldn't hold on to them. So, no. who was featured on it? Uh, we had Mac Dre, Cool Nut, Messy Mar, J T, the Bigger Figure, San Quinn, Louis Loke, Mousy, Eleven Five, Andre Nicotina, Baby Bash, uh, uh, shit, Eleven uh, Five, Cool okay. Nut, Ballhead Rick, Selsky, Be Legit. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? Um, okay, look, look, look. Big let's, Mac. Let's say this. Let's say this. Um, on the 17 Reasons, why you named the 17 Reasons? Well, we was uh, we had to have they had a sign on 17th Street in the Mission District that says 17 Reasons. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? That's we got. I got that from that sign, and you know it just was. It, it stood out plus you know the reason 17 in the clip you know 16 in the clip and one in the chamber for the gun well, that's cool. you feel me so it just kind of went well and uh when we when i said it and i seen it it just it just meshed well with what was going on you know 17 what i'm saying reasons. yeah yeah plus out of, out of that time the latin artist that we was pushing mousy you know representing for the mission district so it was, that was it was you know it, it just matched for everything we was pushing you feel all me? right people so how did you get be legit Mac Dre and all these guys on your album. I was uh at that time I was working with Chuck, who is uh uh we had a when I first started it was called Savage Management and he's the person who basically introduced me into the music industry. Um and he's also now he is the uh manager for Nick Cannon. For you Nick Cannon right now. Yeah, right now. Charles Kelly, you feel me? And, he, out. and, and he helped you start he helped you get. What he he introduced you? me into the music business. Basically, we both okay. basically we both became Godfather at the same time to the same Godson. And I basically had a bunch of money. I'm sitting in a motherfucking drug program. I had a bunch of bread just sitting there, and I'm like thinking, okay, I was gonna start a Starbucks. You know what I'm saying? And I had met him. I forgot, you know, through my cousin, and we started chopping up. He said, man, you, you know, invest in this rap shit. You feel me? Yeah. So I'm like, shit. Okay, you know, I. Well, I always like music, but you know, you know. So I made my first uh, couple songs with him, you know. And when I the first two songs, I was addicted. I made two songs with how, seeing how the studio wore out. I had no idea. Talk about no idea how you make a record. Not you know, there's a studio. You got to buy these big ass reels. Yeah. You got to they huge reels. At that time, they had the four forty twos, you know, or you had to buy the little reels. With you know, long story short is, I didn't even know that they came long. They came like that. Anyway. uh he, uh, you know, we made the first few songs and, you know, then we started coming up with the concept, we're going to make a compilation and we started getting into the compilation and uh, he actually introduced me to a, a few of the key artists um, in in the Bay Area and got me going and got me on my journey, you know what I'm saying? And then, yeah. you know, with the help of San Quinn at the same time and uh, JT, the bigger figure, you feel me? They all pretty much were the circle I was working with, Messy Marv, JT. Uh, 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 San Quinn. All right, let's go. Let's say this. Mm. I want to talk about a couple of artists you work with. Maybe you can tell me some stories. Um, I, I see, got stories, man. I see JT the bigger figure. He all over Africa now, right now. JT keep doing it. JT. JT was putting a, out movies. He was yeah. this that. Yeah, he. I he mean, been he, a hustler like that. He always been ever since I met Jay. From, from we was young, you know what I'm saying. Uh, he, he just was very. Uh, uh, a visionary and and he saw it he made it happen you know what i'm saying so uh yeah he, he man he, it's a frisco hustler right there you know what I mean? All right, look, let's, <laughs> let's say mac dre how, how did you meet mac dre mac dre we met at johnny z studio and that was through chuck and they was working on the rompilation too so we went up there and uh yeah that's where i met coolio the underdog 
Mac Dre, Kilo. That was the very first time I met Kilo too. And I'll never forget uh Dre and when we first met him, he you know, it was it wasn't like uh, he, he he you know, he just got out the penitentiary, so he was still on penitentiary mode. You feel me? So, you know, uh we didn't get to warm up until like the next time we seen him, you feel me? Yeah. And, and develop our relationship. First he was just kinda like he was ready to go. He was making his money with me that day, but you know, he was still on he was you know, you could still see that uh that penitentiary still So you had him coming in to do some songs. Just yeah. come in and record with you. Record with us, yeah. Knock How many songs, songs Dre do the first day? He did two songs. All right. How many you end up doing with Mac Dre? Uh, I think total, I think we've done four, four or five songs. Okay. So let's say this. Mac Dre, his, his company was the Thiz? Thiz Entertainment, yeah. Okay. So how did you become Thiz Latin? So in uh, 2000... Seven, right after Dre died, Kilo had came to me in Miami. They gave me a phone call and it was like, you know, we want you to do the same thing you did with 17 Reasons. Keep in mind, this was 10 years. So we, this is like, we had 96, we had started, 97, let me say 97, we're really yeah. 96, but 97, we came out with 17 Reasons. 10 years later, Mac Dre had passed away like a year earlier, I believe. And uh, or not, not real early. It was like no, real close to that time. Uh, anyway, two thousand seven, uh, seventeen with a thiz was a compilation, and Kilo in Miami was like, "Man, look, we gonna give you the studio. You got access to all our producers. You got access to all the rappers on thiz. We just want you to bring the Latin aspect to the game. Be on top of it. You can have everything, and just and push the way you push." So they gave it to you. They gave it to me. They just knew they knew you was the one though. They gave it to me. I mean, I don't know if they knew I was the one. I'm just still I'm still working at being the I one. Mean, you know what I'm me? saying? They hey. had to know that, you know, like they had they been thinking they, they, they mean, been thinking know, about trying to yeah, cross well, it Kilo, over. I mean Kilo you didn't tell me like when I when I, I remember when we was talking to Kilo, he was just like, man, that that he had told me that seventeen reasons seventeen reasons helped out Mac Dre a lot. Like Right when he got out that CD, actually, it, it helped out their whole career shows, just everything, just to get it cracking right out the gate. And that him and Mac J, like, well, you know, him, that Mac had a lot of love for him, you know can, what I'm saying? Can you tell me this? Pete, this. I got a, I got a picture of Mac Dre hanging up in my office. Mm -hmm. And I got it because I'm a big hip-hop music fan. Mm -hmm. And the people in the Bay and all over the hip-hop industry, they show Mac Dre the utmost respect, like it's, he, he got crazy respect. Yeah. But tell me this, tell me what's, tell me a good reason for why I got him hanging on my wall. Can you tell me something good about Mac Dre that make me know that's I mean, why he's hanging on my wall? That he was a real motherfucker. Mac he was, was the real, real cat, Every, the way he was, it was what it is. He was a real motherfucker. It wasn't a phony about him, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but he was at the same. He was a good motherfucker, but he was a real motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Mac he Dre. wasn't fucking with no fugazi ass imitation ass motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So he was with the shit. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, you know, and I mean, I'll never forget. Like when he died, I was I woke up and I heard on Cam yell. Uh, well, I had told him last time because you know I had Mac Dre and Kilo. I was right before DJ Screw died. Yeah. I got them together, and we was I was gonna have DJ Screw screw down the whole Mac Dre catalog. So you had you was, you was linking DJ Screw up with Mac Dre. Yeah, I hooked it up. It was happening. DJ Screw passed away. Oh, Boom. so y'all never heard it? We never did it. We couldn't. We was just in the process of getting all Mac Dre CDs, getting it all down there to the south, and 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 Screw had passed away. Well, let's go out to Seventeen Reasons. You came out with what? Eighteen with a bullet. 18 with a bullet came out. Um, what that what, what that mean? Oh, 18 with a bullet. 18 is... with a bullet. Oh, but then you got the oldies, 18 with a bullet. So kind of like, you know, we did a little bit of, you know, we were still on the 17 reasons. Yeah. We got 18 with a bullet kind of keeping in the ammunition <laughs> uh, territory. But then at the same time, uh, you know, keep it with the OG, you know. Uh, it was also gangster shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's you know. real gangster shit. So uh, that motherfucker came out, man. I'll never come uh, coming out of creative music. And man, all I seen was on, on Mission Street, and I come out of creative music. He had passed away, R.I.P. And uh, that was the owner. That's like one of the original uh, mom and pop stores that had one of the last mom and pop stores actually in San Francisco uh, that closed down, uh, right. and, and Joe had ran it. But, anyways, uh, R.I.P., man. Uh, 
uh, I came out of creative music, hit on get on Mission Street, and uh, man, all I could I remember hearing 18 with a bullet, the actual song by 11.5, just I was hearing cars up and down the block, just they play, playing it. playing that song though, just like three cars going in. I'm like, this, but I'm, I'm like I'm hearing my shit, but it's the same motherfucking song. But that first song was so hard. That so was who was featured on this? That was 11.5 and Mr. Key. That was the song that we. That was the song that found Mr. Key and we signed him to Black and Brown Entertainment. That song right there, 18 with a bullet. You feel me? So, you know that kicked off. Then we had a bunch of that. That motherfucking album just smacked people. You know, some people like 18 with a bullet more. People like 17 Reasons. Yeah. 17 Reasons ultimately is the classic. It's the first. It's the granddaddy. Yeah. But 18 Bullets, it's right there with it. Do, you know. Do you mind telling us how many how many records they sold? Uh, well, 17 Reads were almost at 400,000 right now, and I believe 18 with a bullet was like at 366,000 sound scan. Damn. And they, they still going, but it ain't going like how So you like, you like almost at a million sold? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cold. Yeah, but it's took him, what, 20 years? But that's cold, though. You know? So the first, you know, 10 years, we was fucking them up, you know? You got to think, though. These guys not selling records. You know, nah. like, Pete, the seller records, somebody had to go to the store to buy it. Mm-hmm. These guys not even doing a hundred thousand, and they can do it on their phone. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? You selling four hundred thousand copies. You made four hundred thousand people get up and go to Fye or something. There's a lot. Well, you know what I'm saying? Like doing that though, there's still a lot of you know. You still, we still got out there and hustled. I mean, we was out there. Yeah, and the hand to hand. You know. Say, let's do this. Let's just talk about what you're doing right now. What you what you got coming out right now? Okay, so right now it's my 20th year, and I'm working on 17 reasons. Uh, Reloaded. Ooh, that's what it's. Ooh, ah! Reloaded, my nigga. You dang. Oh, you just gave me that. We back. We back. 17 reasons reloaded. That's what I'm talking about, <laughs> man. Oh, you just gave me that. Okay, okay, I like that. 17 Reasons Reloaded, man. Come on. So, uh, and we're doing 17 with a Thiz Volume 2. Mm -hmm. So that's 10 years. Look at your 17 Reasons was 20. 20. 17 with a Thiz was 10. Mm -hmm. So we're doing 17 with a Thiz Volume 2. That's what you was, oh, you didn't hear, heard, heard the other music. Yeah. So I got some hits on there. The 17 Reasons is coming out right now. So with 17 Reasons, I'm coming out. Each song got its own album cover. So I'm busting out all the singles, then I'm gonna wrap it up about June, and you're mm -hmm. gonna get the whole album, but a new album cover, you feel me? Yeah. So, well, I'm mesmerizing and hypnotizing everybody with these 17 reasons, this cover, that cover, they gonna see 17, 17, 17, and then we're gonna come with the grand finale where you can get all the songs on the one album. Oh yeah, You feel what cool. I'm saying? And maybe I might just throw a, a bonus, this, the original in there, maybe, I don't know, I'm thinking about it, we'll see. Maybe. You gonna be big, straight up. You gonna be big, go to TV. You gonna be big, straight up. And that's how that.